back again and saucier than ever. It's the Facebook Podcast. Another draft profile here on your video and audio airways on the YouTube. Hit that thumbs up. Smash that bell. Stay in touch with all of our notifications. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We do this all the time. And comment down below. Let us know what you think about Sauce Gardner. Any other prospects or somebody you want us to talk about. Things you like, you don't like. What your team needs. And of course, I'm joined by the head draft analyst of the Flex Zone. Voice of Reason. Senior producer, Cravante Bebe. Yo, yo, yo. We back at it again with another high quality football player right here, man. I'm excited to talk about him, man. We are moving right along with these uh, profiles, brother. For sure, for sure. Let us know what you think about the profile so far. And, of course, check out all our other profiles. Too many to name, but you can catch them down below and on the channel. And subscribe, as I said. But Sauce Gardner, Ahmad Sauce Gardner, Sauce is his nickname, from Detroit, Michigan, a junior from Cincinnati. Six foot three, 190 pounds, 33 and one half inch arms, nine and five eighths inch hands, 40 yard dash, a four four one. I mean, Cravante. The nickname sauce is apropos. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. My gosh. Um, he has. What, okay, so number one, 6'3. We were talking about it. Um, we kind of touched on it when we were talking about Kyle Hamilton. Um, the way the NFL is going is very pass happy. Um, we got a lot of receive. We got a lot of guys coming in from college, playing receiver and making noise year one. Um, and we at at for defender for defenses, the defensive coordinators, guys whose whose job it is to try to slow these guys down or stop or whatever. Having a corner, which is a premier position, in um in the NFL amongst for sure amongst defenses. Um, I want to say maybe edge and then corner. Those, those are like premier positions. Because, again, running backwards is tough. <laughs> um, but Amar Garner, he is – he was made to be a press coverage corner. And he does it very, very, very well. Um, at 6'3", you kind of you see in the picture right here, um, he has some long arms. So he can get his hands – on some guys on the outside, on these pass catchers from the outside. 33 um, and a half inch arms. That's not, 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 not bad. bad. Um, one thing, one uh, intangible uh, that I have for him is that his confidence is through the, is through the roof. It's almost a requirement, and, and at least for me, Byron. I want my corners to have some edge to them. Um, I mean, the, the greatest of all time had more than some A's to him. <laughs> they, he, 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 he's like, he's, he's prime. They call him prime. It's prime time. Now it's just prime. And I'm like, yo, you, for, for somebody to tell an organization that I'm not going to be there when you <laughs> pick is still to this day is like, I've never heard of or seen anything like it but that mindset is what i like in my corner obviously when you're good right you know what i'm saying not not any everybody because you do need the talent to go along with it but he gives me jalen ramsey vibes um talks a lot gets a little it, it, it could get a little chippy out there he 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 talks he he right. on the field he talking um and if he made a play on you or if you did, or if you didn't make a play on him, he'll let you know about it. Right. Um, and I like the I like the edge that he comes with. Um, he's had a pretty pretty good track record pretty much since his freshman year. Um, and in that Alabama game, he was only targeted four times. Alabama knew what was up, even though even though you know we we all saw what happened, but. That guy, they they knew what was up defensively, and Bryce and Bryce Young, yeah, he they 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 all knew what was up. Um, press man, absolutely, uh, the best man, the best man to man covered coverage uh, corner, and he does play zone when need be. But if you ask him, 
he's up in your face. He's up in your face and he's trying to put hands on you. Um, now, uh, if I if I can nitpick, um, because there's there's got there's always positives and always negatives. Um, he's he, he's a bit handsy, because you know that that kind of comes that kind of comes with the territory. You know right. what I'm saying? Because you know if you at, at, at as um Bill Belichick, well he wouldn't say this, but this is how we operate. You ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got You got to find your edge. Come in with that edge and find your edge in the game is uh. What keeps you here a long time and, and keeps you paid. Um, but he can be handsy downfield, um, which obviously can cause penalties, um, holding calls, pass interference, things like that. Um, but if he gets he gets with a good DB coach, defensive coordinator, they'll 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 coach him up and ways to get around get around that. Um and also, um we really did we really aren't really high on this uh, from the corner position, but tackling um, as a defender, period, you play on the defensive side of the ball, you have to be able to tackle. Now, him being on the outside, he doesn't do a lot of tackling, especially when his, his, uh, the person he's guarding is not really getting the ball. But um, he's not good at like form tackling. Um, on the outside, but that's minor. That is minor because the upside, the upside is absolutely there. He is the number one corner in this draft, and arguably, arguably the best defender in this draft. And you know, he he has he's a top five, just like Kyle Hamilton. He's a top five, dare I say, top three talent in this draft. Well, if you ask our good friend Riles, he thinks he's as high as three to go to maybe even the Texans. But where do you think he goes? Um, let's look. Let's let's go and check this list out. Um, Texans at three, Jets at four, Giants at five, Falcons at eight, Seahawks at nine. And he can go literally to all these teams. <laughs> um. I don't think he's out. He's he's not sliding out of the top ten. Um, the Jets. I feel I feel like he go as early <laughs> early as late as the Jets because Jets have four and ten. So he's going somewhere in there, and it's a good chance just because the Jets and the Giants pick twice. It's a good chance he goes to a New York team. Um, but he could be he could he could go at four. Real talk, like in real life, he could go at four. Right. Um, I don't think the Giants would take him. Depending, on, I, I I wish I could see their big board, but if he falls to the Giants, it'd be tough. It'd be tough because you know we all have we all have a plan <laughs> going into it. But if some if if a piece of gold falls out of the sky, you got to catch it, you know. Right. And also with the Giants, um, they're having uh, Bradbury's making a lot of money. Bradbury is making a lot of money, and I'm not sure if he will be there um, this upcoming year. Um, I think they're trying to restructure between him and a Dory Jackson. They're trying to restructure um, contracts, but Bradbury, his contract may not be able to be restructured. They may be trying to may, they may be trying to get rid of him. Um, but I mean, what a hell of a replacement, right? <laughs> yep. Cheaper too. Much. Oh my gosh, much cheaper. Much, much cheaper, and and at the and at the, and at least for the next four years yes, with the fifth sure. year option, but at least exactly. four because you might if, if he if he is anything how he's how we how we look at him now and in projecting he's gonna get he's gonna get another contract definitely. But, Any comparisons? Um. So I have a I have Richard Sherman, um, mainly because of the height. Um, he plays uh well you know, we all know Richard Sermon played in a cover three base uh defense, but he's a much better press man, um press man guy. Gives me Patrick Peters Pat, Patrick Peters, um Peterson vibes as well. Um so yeah, that's my call. Hey, with a nickname like sauce. Somebody's gonna be lucky to have him, and you never can have too many corners. I ain't gonna lie. 
Never. Would you? <laughs> no. I don't. I don't see him going not. past going past the top ten either. But hey, another intriguing prospect to see where he goes, and I'm sure he'll be might be in a conversation for defensive rookie of the year. I think I'm willing to put that up there. For sure. Um. Well, you know, it's tough for defenders uh, on the outside to right. get it because you have to have stats of some sort and past breakups ain't gonna get it there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nope. And if he's out there shutting folk down, he may not have that many opportunities um, right. to to do so. But hey, man, he's gonna be he's gonna be that guy on somebody's team for sure, for sure, for sure. Well, you already know the winning team is here on the Flex Zone Podcast, the only place Cavante giving you a sports how you want it when you need it. Make sure you smash that like button, hit that bell for all notifications, comment down below. Let us know what you think about Sauce Garden and where he may go. And let us know if you want to talk about any specific prospect, because we'll try to get that for you here on the Flex Zone Podcast. Follow us, stay tuned, subscribe, 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 and we'll be back again, Cavante, right? Yes, sir. Hey, Cavante, God's favorite host. We gone, y'all.